My name is Kenzie. I'm offering you a Hatha yoga practice here at the Everyday Counts program space. Please remember I'm only here to make suggestions. You might notice I don't have any props, but you're welcome to use blocks or bolsters or blankets or pillows, a chair, just whatever allows you to kind of meet yourself where you're at today. So let's begin by making ourselves comfortable. That might be lying down or again, sitting in a chair, sitting cross-legged or on a bolster or maybe kneeling. But once you are comfortable, feel free to close your eyes, to breathe through your nose if you can, and to allow yourself a few moments to simply arrive here in the present. It might help to feel the support beneath you. So you might feel where your body touches down. And imagine that you can kind of feel that pull of gravity helping you to feel rooted, to feel supported, and stable. This gift of gravity allowing us to be held And from this place, perhaps we begin to notice the feeling of air or clothing against the skin. Starting to define our own borders. There's an inside, there's an outside. And what kind of connects that inside and outside is the breath. As we inhale, we're inviting that breath in. As we exhale, we're inviting that breath out. If it helps, you could bring your hands to your belly or your side ribs. And as you inhale, you can feel that expansion into the hands. As you exhale, feel that inward movement. I'm hoping to find this very effortless breath. So as we inhale, we can soften the belly to receive the inhale deep. Maybe soften the shoulders as we release that exhale slow. But again, not forcing, not controlling the breath, just kind of an invitation and allowing. Allowing the inhale to land deep by softening the belly to expand with the in-breath. And the exhale just rolls out, letting it go. And this breath all on its own can nurture your nervous system, can move you towards a deeper state of calm, of rest and digest, of relaxation. And so let's offer that for a few more breaths, a soft, deep in-breath. And softer, slower out-breath. And we're not trying to fill the whole lungs with the inhale or empty the lungs with the exhale. We're simply being in that easy, natural place. Inhale, just invite it deep. And exhale, let it get out slow. And let's offer five or six more breaths just like this. So here we are now. If it suits you, perhaps rest a hand to the belly and a hand to the chest. 
And offer yourself some sweetness, a kind word, a prayer, an affirmation just for you. Slowly releasing those hands. And let's make our way to a reclined position. So lying on your back and take your time getting there. Now once you're lying down, you're welcome to bend your knees and bring your feet to the edges of the mat. You might bring the arms out to the sides, perhaps the palms face up, or perhaps the hands stay on the belly. We'll rock both knees to one side and then the other. And still tuning into that soft, deep in breath. Softer, slower out breath as those knees act like little windshield wipers. We're letting gravity have your legs as they Slowly rock to one side and then the other. And we might start noticing a little bit of stretch. And so kind of curious about where you're feeling this, perhaps through the hips or the fronts of the thighs. Or maybe somewhere else. Now let's rock those knees once more to either side. And then we'll meet back at center. We'll walk our feet in a little bit and then lift one foot, hug that knee in towards the belly. You can use your hands on your shins. Just the weight of your arms deepening that stretch. Offering a couple breaths just to let that right leg get heavy. Or maybe a little rock from side to side. Just whatever feels right here. And now we'll bring those hands behind the knee. And we're going to play with straightening and bending the leg with just a little bit of guidance here. So let's point the right toes. Yeah, point that foot and we'll slowly straighten the leg just wherever it wants to go, as straight as it wants to go. And then we'll flex the foot. There's a little extra stretch in the calf. And we're gonna bend the knee. We'll do that a few more times. Point the toes, straighten the leg, flex and bend. Let's do this two more times, point, and straighten, flex, bend, and point, straighten, flex, bend. Let's keep that foot flexed and straighten. And now we point and bend. Let's do that three more times. Flex the foot, straighten, point, bend. Couple more, flex, straight, point, bend. Once more, flex and straighten, point and bend. Great. We're going to just keep that leg quite floppy. Yeah, maybe give it a little shake here, a little bounce. Yeah. And now we can slowly put that foot down. Just notice how that feels. And your leg is always welcome to be long instead of bent. So let's lift the left foot. And bring those hands to the shin or the knee and use the weight of the arms to draw that left knee towards the belly. Offer a few breaths here. 
Soft and deep. Soft and slow. We'll bring the hands behind the knee. Point the toes. And then we'll slowly straighten the leg. And it doesn't have to completely straighten. We can keep a bend here and the leg can be further away. We're gonna flex the foot, bend the knee. Point, straighten. I'm just straightening this leg so you can see my foot. We're flexing and bending. Two more, nice and slow. Point and straighten. Flex and bend. Point and straighten. Flex and bend. I'm going to keep the foot flexed and straighten. Point, bend. Oh, uh, three more. Flex, straighten, point, bend. Flex, straighten, point, and bend. One more to go. Flex and straight, point, and bend. Great. And then we're just going to shake this out a little bit. Really floppy. A little bit of bounce. Yeah, we've just done a lot to release tension and invite blood flow into the lower legs. Really helpful through the calf and through the ankle and foot. Yeah, find your breath here. And then we'll slowly draw both knees in and maybe allow the knees to come out to the sides a little bit and notice how that feels. And then guide those knees together with your hands. We'll do this a few times, bring the knees apart and together. Let's do that two more times, nice and slow, maybe starting to feel a little stretch to the inner thighs. Drawing it in. Great. Now from here, let's roll onto our side. So we're rolling right onto our side we're going to stack those hands on top of each other. The hips are stacked on top. And um, you might notice once you put your head down, it's going to be at a slightly unfortunate angle. So if it hurts, definitely, you know, wedge a pillow or a block under your head. But we're going to start moving and twisting, and the head's going to turn and be much more comfortable soon. Um, but again, listen to your own body. We want to make this really accessible for you. So let's lift the top arm up right up to the ceiling. And then as we reach it behind us, we're really soft here. We're letting the thighs separate. We're letting belly and chest turn to the ceiling. You feel that nice openness. And then we'll reach that arm back across. Yeah, I call this an open book twist. Like we're opening a book. Those arms are like the cover of a book. So we'll try that again. We're going to lift, reach across. We're going to allow the back to move towards the mat, belly towards ceiling. We're gonna close that book again. Let's do that a couple more times. Just nice and slow, you might close your eyes and just notice how it feels to move in this way. Notice you can let the thigh separate, you can let that top hip shift back. But then as we reach back across, the thighs come together, the hips stack, the shoulders and hands stack. We'll do one more. And we'll rest here a breath. Now we'll roll over to our other side. I'm going to come to the other end of my mat so I can keep an eye on you. So you could do that instead if you prefer. Again, we'll stack the hips, stack the shoulders, stack the hands. We'll place that head down as uncomfortable as it may be. 
We'll keep it moving. We'll float the top arm up as it reaches behind. We turn belly and chest easily to the ceiling, letting the hip draw back, letting the thighs separate. And we reach that arm back across, hand to hand, closing that book, kind of closing everything. We'll do that three more times. You might kind of notice how your breath accompanies this movement. Sometimes there's an inhale as we open, sometimes there's an exhale as we close, but it's not a hard and fast rule. You just trust the breath. We have one more. And we'll meet We're back with the hands, the shoulders, the hips and knees stacked. We'll offer a breath here. And you're finding your top hand, you might press it into the floor in front of you to help guide you upright. We are halfway to hands and knees, so let's go there, tabletop position. So please feel free to support your knees in your tabletop position. You could even have your forearms on the mat here, or you could have your forearms or your hands on a pillow. It could be on the tops of fists, just whatever allows this to be an accessible pose. So let's begin to rock the hips from side to side. If you practice with me regularly, you know this is one of my favorites. Just coming forward to support those knees. Yeah. As so we're starting to lean into that outer hip stretch, which is pretty ever present for most of us, we can feel the outer hips starting to stretch. We could turn this into a bit of a circle. We rock to one side, we circle back past the heels, we rock to the other side as the weight shifts forward. Let's keep it going. Yeah. Circling the hips around the body. We seem to be doing things in groups of four today. So let's circle one more time in this direction. And then maybe as hips move towards heels, we can change the direction. Again, about four times around the body, pushing the floor away as the weight shifts forward. Maybe there's one more circle here. And then we'll meet in our child pose. You might widen your knees as you drop the hips back towards the heels. You might walk the arms forward or cross the forearms, stacking them to support the forehead or even stacking the fists. Let's come back to that soft, deep in-breath. Softer, slower out-breath. Couple more. Wonderful, let's return to our tabletop position. Yeah, so it seems no practice would be complete without a bit of cat-cow. That's the rounding and arching of the spine. And again, you could do this on forearms. You could do this on fists. Well, let's locate our tailbone and tuck it under. And begin to slowly round the spine and push the floor away a bit. Feel those shoulder blades spreading. We'll turn the tailbone up. And slowly begin to arch. Feel those shoulder blades shrug together. Let's do three more in either direction. More or less. We're all going to be moving at a slightly different pace. And that is wonderful. I'm starting to notice 
any feelings of stretch, of engagement as we do this once more in either direction. And we'll meet back at our neutral spine. So we'll press into child pose one more time and maybe even circle your wrists a little bit while you're back there. Just noticing how your hands are feeling. Maybe make fists, spread fingers wide. And we'll tune into the breath. A couple more. We'll return to our tabletop. I'm gonna do one more movement um, from hands and knees. And again, you could be on forearms here or fist. And you can take a little break and shake out your hands as need be. So I'm reaching my right leg out behind me, keeping the toes tucked. And you might have to keep your eye on my foot for a few moments just to find this movement in the body. So this is what I call a foot smush. I'm rocking my heel over to one side and then I'm circling around the top of the foot, kind of pointing the tops of the toes into the mat. I'm rocking to the other side. And then tucking those toes, I'm circling around again. So just noticing if you can find your way through this little bit of foot smushing. Yeah. Pressing down through those hands or forearms. Maybe hearing some cricks and cracks through those ankles and feet. Yeah. And I'll see if we can change direction. I'm not even sure if I change direction. It's kind of hard to tell. And regardless, we'll circle a couple more times. And we're using this as a little bit of a shoulder strengthener too. These arms are working hard, pushing against the floor. Yeah. So we're gonna bring that foot back to stillness one little bit more here. So let's squeeze that right glute. So squeeze your right bum a little bit. And now we're gonna lift that right leg or whatever leg was reaching behind you. We're gonna lift the leg and just feel the strength there. I'm gonna put it down, kind of tap the toe. Let's do a few more, just lifting and lowering. Everything else stays nice and quiet. If it helps, think about kind of drawing the belly in slightly. Yeah, let's do three more here. And what I love is feeling all of this strength at that glute and hamstring. So that sense of strength that lifts your leg up. Yeah, we'll do that one more time. And now we'll keep it lifted if we so choose for three breaths, really squeezing that glute. Feel free to exaggerate here and really invite that muscle to awaken. There's quite a few muscles here that are awake now. One more breath. And then we can release that knee. Now let's walk our hands towards us and we can come to kneeling as just a little break here. Yeah. And since we've been working through the lower body, well, let's do a little bit for the arms here and then I promise we'll do the other leg, the foot smush, the leg lift. So from kneeling and again, support those knees any way you need to. You could be sitting for this. You could be sitting right down if you need to. Arms are heavy at our sides. Let's turn the palms to face out. Float those arms overhead. And press the hands together. Slowly bring the arms down, center of the chest. And we'll interlace the fingers, press the arms away from us. We'll sweep the arms overhead and release. And it's okay if your arms don't wanna go overhead. It's okay if we don't keep those fingers interlaced when we press the palms away. We're just inviting those shoulders to move a little bit with the weight of the arms involved. We're interlacing and pressing, sweeping. This is the good kind of sweeping, <laughs> no broom involved. Let's do that a couple more times. Yeah, groups of four. Press. You can choose how hard you press those hands together. Interlace, sweep the arms up. Release. One more. 
Imagine your arms are as light as feathers. Press. Reach. And release. Yeah. Let's do it all again on the other side. So we'll come back to our hands in these position. Probably reaching the left leg behind you now. Again, you know, choose how you want to support the upper body here, whether that's hands, forearms, fists. Yeah, this you could even be resting on a chair with your forearms. And so we're going to do that little foot smush. At this point, the toes are tucked. We're going to rock the heel to one side. We're going to roll over the toes. So it's kind of like you're pointing your foot behind you. We're going to rock to the other side. And then we're back with those toes tucked, completing the circle. Yeah. Couple more in this direction, kind of push the floor away. This is a great way to strengthen the shoulders while increasing mobility in the foot. And then we'll change the direction. Yeah. You could even close your eyes if you wanted and have this foot smush experience. Couple more. And then we'll meet back at center. And this is where we're gonna squeeze the left glute with your mind. Maybe draw the belly in slightly. I like to think about drawing the front ribs in just to prevent a back bend here. And then we lift the left leg and we put it down. We'll do that three more times, slower than you want to, really finding the lift. I love to feel the strength at the back of that hip and leg. Back down, couple more. You can again really squeeze that left glute, find that shortening of the hamstring. These are our hip extensor muscles. They help bring that leg powerfully behind us. So let's keep the leg lifted, keep that squeeze to the glute. Maybe look down at your mat now, press into those hands, shrug the shoulders away from the ears. Let's offer one more breath here. And now we can put our knee down. And again, we'll walk our hands towards us and we'll come to kneeling for a moment. Yeah, we'll let that go. So I wanted to play a little bit with side bending before we get to standing. And I like this one because there's a certain simplicity to it. So I'm gonna find my right hand and just let it slowly glide down the outside of my thigh. Just noticing where that takes me. And then I'm going to start to glide the left hand down the outer left thigh. Yeah. And that's kind of the practice. We're going to glide one hand down the side body and the other one up. And it's okay if you don't want to touch the body, you can kind of glide just hovering. Yeah. Maybe that arm moving up wants to reach up through the elbow a bit. Maybe it doesn't. Choose your own adventure yoga. Maybe we reach right up. And we'll do a couple more either direction. Again, you choose. How do you need this to feel? And we can find this sweet spot between effort and ease, and it's unique to each person. And this is not a one size fits all, and yet it is because we can adjust and adapt. Yeah, so here we are, Ooh, probably nice and aware of the side body now. Find the breath. So from here, we will come to standing. Feel free to use the wall, a chair, just whatever allows you to make your way to your upright position. And once you are upright, 
Let's find our feet comfortably under us. There's no hard and fast rule with how wide the feet need to be, just that you feel stable. Yeah. Now let's lift and spread the toes and lower them down. We'll do that a few more times, probably three more times to make it four. And you'll notice how the weight needs to shift back a little bit to lift those toes. We'll do it one more time, really trying to lift and spread those toes. A chair nearby for balance is welcome. We're putting those toes down. Uh, from here, we're going to rock to the outer edges of the feet, lifting the inner edges. Press down into the inner edges, lifting the outer. There doesn't need to be a lift here. This could just be about pressing without lifting. What I love about this is it starts to awaken the arches of the feet, of which we have four. And it starts to kind of, no you notice how that movement kind of comes up into the hips. Yeah, you might feel a little shortening of the inner thighs or the outer thighs, a little bit of engagement, but this is not just a foot movement. But it is pretty sensational for the feet. So maybe you feel that awareness dropping down into your feet. So once more, either direction. And then we release, maybe walking the feet a little bit. Just, you know, let it go. We'll do a little more. And this is one we do in almost every practice when we're standing, just to prepare the lower body. Our lower body is so, so prepared. We're going to walk the hands down the thighs. We're going to rest our hands on our thighs with a little knee bend here. Begin to circle the knees. And as you circle the knees, you can start to shift the weight around the edges of the feet. So kind of notice, you know, to the point where the toes kind of lift and spread as you shift back. And notice how you rock into one edge and then the other. And this is a lovely warm up for the knees, but listening. If the knees don't want to track from side to side, you can keep focusing on forward and back. That's great. Maybe we change the direction of the circle. It's also a lovely way to start stretching the calves. And we did a little calf stretch right at the start of our practice. We're kind of tuning in now. What do the calves have to say? A couple more circles here. Wonderful. And now we can come upright. And notice how that feels. Maybe we find our mountain pose. As we inhale, finding our fullest height. Exhale, tops of the shoulders soften. One more, just like that. Now we're gonna play a little bit with a wide-legged stance. Um, in this case, it's lovely to have a chair right in front of you. Just, that's a lovely, a lovely thing if you do find this challenging for balance, that it's, it's quite accessible in front of you. You would have the back of the chair facing, so you could access the back of the chair, or even the the seat of the chair. Um, and you can adjust how wide your feet are and whether they turn out a little bit. Uh, we're going to play with bending one knee and just bringing our hand to the thigh. And then pushing your foot away, maybe pushing your hand into your thigh as you come up. And then we'll try the other side. Yeah. We're going to play with this a few times. And again, you'll notice my feet kind of turn out a little bit when I do this. It's really different for everyone. Uh, if you need to go a little wider to find that or a little closer. And you can choose how deep you want to go into this. Again, just kind of assessing for you. We can stop here. This is a lovely place. We could go lower. We could go all the way down, just depending on our own mobility. Uh, for me, the important part is pushing the foot into the mat to come back up, to really feel those muscles that help us push off the ground in lots of different positions, we can find strength by pushing the ground away. So take a moment at the bottom of your expression of this pose and then push to come back up. Yeah. We're gonna push to come back up. So we'll do this a few more times in either direction. Push. In a way, it's sort of like a one-legged squat, right? You've got this position on one side. Push. You've got the support of your thighs, your legs, the ground. We're pushing the ground away. Yeah. 
push. And a couple more either side. Place between effort and ease. Great. Ah, let's walk our feet in. Back to our mountain pose. Let's take a few breaths here. Heavy arms, tall through your whole body. Inhaling for height. And exhaling soft. A couple more. And so we've done quite a bit to awaken those hips. And I'd like to play a little bit with squat. Um, again, just to give us options for movement, and because we just played with kind of a one-legged squat, I just want to notice how it feels to get both off feet and hips and legs involved. Um, so I'm taking kind of a wide-legged stance, not as wide as before. I'm going to assume I need to turn the toes out a bit, because I always think the knees are kind of pointing towards the second or third toe. Uh, but it's going to be different for all of us. Yeah. From here, we can keep our hands on our thighs for lots of support as we bend the knees. And as we find our own version of squat, even bringing elbows to thighs. Yeah. And then we're going to push the ground away. Okay. And we'll do that a few more times. And this is where we can adjust as we're moving into it. I can think, oh, you know, my knees are kind of pointed in, my feet are pointed out. So maybe I bring my feet to point in a little bit. Maybe I send my knees out a little bit. And then can I push the ground away? Yeah. You know, maybe we go really deep into it and we realize that's not what our knees want today, so we stop. We go a little, a little higher. We stop at a higher position. I'm going to turn sideways just so you can notice that I'm not trying to stay upright here. I'm letting my torso follow my pelvis, which naturally shifts forward. Yeah. And part of what this is training, this pushing off the floor is it really helps us when we're standing up from sitting, even in a chair, that we find our feet, that we let the knees track forward a little bit, and that we push the ground away, that we don't kind of just hoist ourselves out of a chair. Same with lowering down. We don't need to drop into a chair. We can lower down with control. We can push to get up. So we'll do this three or four more times. You can choose how deep you want to go. You can take a break here. Pushing the ground away. And because we do so much with our legs together, you know, whether that's walking or even how we sit, being able to find some strength and mobility with the knees and legs wide just creates more options for movement and creates kind of a more stable hip joint as we start to awaken the glutes and the outer hips. Here's our last one. I've talked through it all. And push. Yeah. Again, we can walk our feet in. We can find our mountain pose. Nice and tall. And soft shoulders with the exhale. And a couple more. Our final piece of standing movement, again, requires slightly wider feet and kind of floppy through the ankles, knees and hips. Arms are floppy at your sides. It's a floppy pose, apparently. Floppy movement. And we're going to start to gently twist. And so we're kind of letting our arms kind of guide the twisting here. Maybe the shoulders start to follow. And maybe the hips start to follow. You'll notice as I twist to one side, I'm lifting the opposite heel. I'm bending that knee. And I'm so floppy that I can actually hear my hands gently slapping my body. Yeah. Maybe you're letting your head and neck turn over your spine. Or maybe this is getting a little more energetic, just depending on your balance, right? But we're really kind of fluid with this movement. Can the whole body just follow at one? 
you notice how your breath shows up for this. And any way at all. Do a few more, either direction, either side. Wonderful, let's slow it down. And we're back to center. We'll find our mountain one more time. Nice and tall. Soft shoulders. From here, we'll be uh, moving to seated with the legs in front of us. Again, take your time finding that journey down to your mat. Use the wall, use a chair. Let's bring the legs out in front, nice and wide, leaning into the hands. Again, if you practice with me regularly, you were wondering when we were going to do this, I'm sure of it. So feet are right at the edges of the mat, we'll let both knees fall to one side, and then the other. We've been focusing on twisting today, we've been focusing on the hips. Yeah. So now we'll put some of this together. turning sideways so you can see me here. So as the knees fall to the left, if you'd lean into that left hand, sweep the right arm around. And there's that reach. And then we'll reach those fingertips away from us as we come back to center. We bring the hand down, the knees come to center. The knees fall to the right, lean into that right hand, lift the left hand, we're sweeping the arm around the body, reaching behind us. A nice extra breath here to stretch and reach. And then slowly back. Let's do that a couple more times, either direction. Maybe even closing your eyes, noticing the breath, and noticing sensations of stretch. And once more, either side. Now I'm going to offer one more variation here. Uh, might not speak to everyone, um, but it's an interesting one and it's a way to mobilize through the hips, through twisting and through the shoulders. So I will um, guide you through it very slowly. I'll try to use all the right body parts named and yeah, peek at me when you need to if it's not clear. So both knees are going to fall to the right. We're leaning into that right hand, sweeping the left arm around behind us. So just like we did before. And this is where, um, where it changes. So that left hand that's reaching behind you, you're going to put it down right beside the, the right one. And now you're going to lower the right forearm to the mat, just where it is. You're going to notice your left leg, that's the top hip. And we're going to walk that leg behind us just as much as is comfortable looking for a little bit of stretch through the thigh or hip, if you so choose. Now that left arm that was reaching behind you, we're gonna do it again. So we're reaching it behind us. Now press down through the lower forearm, the one on the mat. And now we're gonna sweep that left arm up towards the ceiling, reaching it behind us as far as it wants to go as we turn the chest to the ceiling. We're gonna carve that big circle. And then we're gonna reach beyond that right hand again. So we're circling, turning chest down to the floor. And then we're doing it again. So the idea is that you're gonna draw a big circle with that left arm. You're gonna let the spine follow. So it's twisting a little bit in one direction and then the other. And just following those groups of four, we've got two more circles in this direction. And again, you're letting 
your spine follow the journey of the arm. So it's not just the arm moving from the shoulder, it's almost as if you're reaching right from your very center. Yeah, fingertips are guiding, but we're letting the whole body follow along. Uh, so a couple options here. If you wanna rest here a little bit, you could rest both forearms or kind of just hang out. Or you could change the direction of the circle. You could reach that arm down the body and behind. And back around. And down the body and behind. We'll do two more. Pressing down through that lower forearm. Every time we're pushing into the floor, there's a chance to build strength into the shoulder joint. Yeah. As well as the hands, the wrists, the arms. All right, next time you reach that arm behind you, let's bring the hand to the floor. Let's bring the other hand under us. We can come back to center. Yeah, you could lean into those hands. You could rock the knees a few times just to make sure everything's feeling okay. And our final piece of the practice will be to do it all again on the other side. So we'll meet at center and knees fall to the left. Lean into that left hand. We'll sweep the right arm around behind. Bring the right hand down beside the left. We'll lower onto the left forearm. Let's walk the right leg behind us just as much as we want, maybe feeling a bit of stretch here. And now we're reaching that right arm beyond the left and then sweeping the arm up and around behind us. Maybe we turn the chest to the ceiling and then we circle down the body and around. Maybe we turn chest to the floor. We continue that journey. I feel like I'm almost stretching right out of the belly and the hips as I reach behind and keep it going. Press down through the lower forearm, stable through that bottom shoulder. Got one more circle in this direction to go. And this is where you might rest on both forearms, rest your forehead, um, or maybe change the direction. So we could sweep down the body and around. Keep pressing through the lower arm. Keep reaching right from your very center. And guiding with those fingertips, but seeing if the whole body can follow. Got one more big circle here. And then we bring the hand down. Push into it to get the other hand under us. And we're back to center. As we lean into the hands and rock those knees, it is time for final relaxation. So you might need a sweater or pillow or blanket. If you're lucky, you can press pause if you need to to get anything you need. Um, you might need to move through a few more poses. You're welcome to just complete your practice in your own time and your own way. When you're ready for final relaxation, perhaps lying on your back or seated, um, yeah, whatever allows you to be comfortable. Your comfort is the most important ingredient in this final relaxation pose. So yeah, legs could be long if you prefer them bent. Maybe the knees are bent, feet are wide, and we turn the toes in and rest the knees together. Especially if there's any tightness in the low back, also putting pillows under your knees is another great option. You might shrug the shoulder blades together a bit. You might turn the palms up, the arms away from the body, or you might rest the hands to the belly. Again, your comfort, you choose. Closing your eyes, perhaps. Breathing through your nose if you can. Mm 
Allow yourself a few moments to arrive here at the end of your practice. Again, can you notice the pull of gravity allowing you to rest here fully supported? And we have this natural trust that we won't float away. And that is the gift of gravity. This feeling of stillness and connection to the ground beneath us so that we can be supported, we can be held by the earth, by the soft support beneath us so that we can let go. so that we can breathe and feel, can soften and settle. So let's tune in to that soft, deep in-breath. Softer, slower out-breath. And let ourselves be. Feeling the rise and fall of your abdomen. Soft, deep in breath, the abdomen expands. Soft or slower out breath, the abdomen draws in. Letting ourselves be. Again, your mind may wander away from the simplicity of breathing and feeling. But as we rest here for a couple more minutes, let's keep returning to the journey of the breath. Let's feel the inhale as the abdomen expands. 
Let's feel the exhales, the abdomen draws back inward. And it's challenging to let this be enough. The mind loves to move all around, but we'll keep bringing it back like a little puppy, redirecting back to the breath. And knowing this is a relaxation breath pattern that is nourishing us, nudging us towards deeper states of resting and digesting, of relaxing and letting go. Let's offer five or six more breaths to this pose. If you feel a deep need to stay right where you are, please do so for as long as you are comfortable. If you're ready to invite some movement, maybe it's the fingers and toes, wrists or ankles. Oh, maybe there's a yawn, a slow turn of your head or a stretch, or just whatever feels delicious. You might bend your knees. You might roll over to one side, resting your head on your arm. You might just as slowly push that top hand into the mat to bring yourself upright. If it suits you, perhaps rest a hand to the belly and a hand to the chest once more. And again, offer yourself some sweetness, a kind word, a prayer, an affirmation, just for you. Releasing those hands, perhaps opening your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions or concerns, always feel free to reach out to us at the Everyday Counts program. <sighs> I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.